Hello, gentles and lady men. I am Uwan Gaming, and this is part two of my journey to create a Yomi Hustle mod. We have done a lot of stuff since we have last visited. Since then, I have created. I, I made notes for everything that I I did. I created one. Uh, I, I created small animations for uh, landing, burst, knockdown, uh, hurt high, hurt low, and hurt mid. Uh, and then I use the hurt mid to actually use for the hurt air and hurt M for the throne animations. Because they all just kind of looks like they would work anyway, so I just used it for all three of them. Uh, and then I also did the, the wall slam. Now, a couple of things of note. Uh, the burst animation was an animation that I had decided uh, to turn into an actual animation. So previously, the burst animation is only one frame long. However, if you look at the burst node here to get the information on how burst works, you can see that it plays the burst animation, which was one frame long originally, and the animation length is 25 frames. So given that we have, ex so given this information, we have exactly 25 frames to work with. So I created a animation that turned out to be uh, one, two, six frames long, and I chose the last frame to, uh, and all these animations right here, um, let me switch to the actual burst animation uh, on, on the screen here, and uh, you, you can see e each frame is just uh, the, these little. It's, it's this pose with the with him shouting. That's what the black is for. And then uh, we have these little uh, like voice waves that are bursting out a little bit further with every frame. And then the last one uh, is the resting. Is kind of like that that resting frame where he's just by himself for the rest of the animation. So the whole thing looks like this. Now, this is actually playing a little bit too fast in, ga in, in the actual game. It was like blitzing by way too quick. Um, and if we, we look at uh, sorry, the, the burst node over here so we can get the information on it. Um, what I had to do is uh, this thing right here says ticks per frame. Now, a tick is the in-game frame, uh, the in-game unit measurement of time frame, right? Uh, and it was originally set to 1 because it didn't really need to be anything else. So I wanted my animation to play a little bit slower so you could see it going faster because bursts are pretty fast and to go through 6 frames in the blink of an eye is, it was it kind of sucks. So by setting the ticks to frame per 2, that means for every 2 in-game frames it plays 1 frame of animation. So we can, uh, so when we do all this we can see that, you know, we go into a game and compare um, these, these two uh, things. I also beefed up the, the actual idle model uh, for my character a little bit, so he looks a little bit thicker in the chest now. Uh, but if we, if, if, if we throw this guy right here, right? I still haven't created a grab animation. That's actually going to be on my to-do list today with you guys. Uh, we do this burst animation. We can see he does this exact one frame uh, for the whole time. But, you know, that's a wasted opportunity, and a lot of mod characters do, in fact, have their, their own uh, animations. So, we're, we're 25 frames later right now, right? And so now if we grab here, uh, where's the, the grab? And just throw. And we can see the burst animation. Yeah, that actually kind of plays at like a relatively okay speed. And it knocks him back. And this, this whole, uh, this war cry, this war scream that acts as the burst animation is uh, directly inspired uh, from Hora Lu's roar animation that he does in in actual combat in Elven Ring with you, uh, when he kicks your when, when he uh, when he kicks your ass by roaring and knocking you ten feet back, stopping your attack. So it's actually kind of like a burst in Elven Ring, which I thought was fairly fitting. Anyways, so through this we were able to input an actual moving animation uh, where there normally isn't one, and we're actually going to do the reverse today. Uh, with uh, another animation. So if we go to our animation house here in the sprite thing, and we look for... Uh, double jump is what I'm looking for, as well as jump backwards. Double jump and then... Yeah, jump back. Double jump and jump back, I'm pretty sure use the exact same animation. Switch over there. Yeah, they're borderline the exact same animation, but we uh, we don't really need them to be multiple animations because in Ninja's case, he, he does want to have like a special animation because he does like a, a flip and a backflip whenever he goes forwards and backwards, but we don't need our character to be quite that agile. Uh, and that applies for the, the jump back as well. So we're actually going to remove all of these frames and just put in one frame of our character just jumping backwards. 
and that's going to be the project for, for right now. So here is our base model that we are working off of now. As I mentioned, I did beef him up a little bit, uh, just in the base model department. So we're going to add a new frame. And the reason I always start from this base model is that I always get a good idea uh, it, it, of how to keep his size consistent, as well as uh, being able to onion the layers so that I can uh, just make uh, so that I can uh, so I can make it consistent because I'll always have this kind of onions layer in the background showing me the rough shape and size of my character. So in this one, we want to have our character jumping backwards a little bit. Uh, so we're going to rotate the head a couple frames over. It's not it's not going to be anything extreme. This is going to be a a very simple kind of uh, kind of setup here. <laughs> I didn't forget to use layers. Don't don't forget to use layers. My bad, but I'm just gonna deal with it now. Now I I kept his arm the same, but I get the idea that if you he, if he's jumping backwards, his uh, his left arm or the, his left arm or the one on our right side might lift up a little bit uh, as he kind of tucks the weapon a little bit closer to himself as he jumps back to you know, presumably avoid some kind of strike. Uh, so we're actually going to curve this arm in a little bit, uh, because I think that would be believable given the anatomy of a human. We're going to leave just this one space right here to to insinuate that there is, like, space between his armpit, even though they're... Uh, to, to separate the arm and the chest, even though there realistically wouldn't be. All right, now we want both of the legs here to be... Uh, kind of swayed in this direction. Now we're going to rotate the axe a little bit on a, on a little bit of a lower angle this time. In fact, I actually think it's going to be just completely level to the ground. Fill. Make sure it cuts across the body. Goes under the arm here. And then we're going to have it curve up a little bit because I did stylize the axe to make it just a little bit curved. Like that. There we go. Next, we just take our brighter gray that we're accustomed to using on the edge of our axe here. And there we go. There is a jump back animation. While I'm here, though, I'm going to be adding another frame and using it for the double jump animation. Just because, you know, why not? We're already here. So I imagine for a double jump, you know, he uh, he, he presses his feet straight down, right? Uh, so that he can kind of skyrocket up a little bit further, and in that process, you know, you would your your arms holding the axe would also kind of naturally go down, just to kind of, uh, it just probably not even on purpose, not even like consciously doing it, but your arms would also dip down with your legs in a in, when your brain does the mental attempt to to straighten your body, right? So for this one, we're going to want the axe to be a little bit low, and I'm actually going to remember to use layers this time, so we're going to recenter our head. And then to make it look like he jumped, we're actually also uh, going to add another frame to this. But what we're going to do to this frame is uh, we're going to put this below. And we're going to take this, this light gray here and just kind of create like a, a little circle, if you will. It has a, a shock wave. Right, as it's to insinuate that he, uh, he kicked off from the ground. And that's why you have an extra layer below your your main your main chest here. Now we add in our beard, but set with that same color we just used. Once again, just avoiding the hands but going over the chest. And we're making this axe notably lower. And then we're going to add one more frame, and we're just going to simply remove this bottom layer with that so it looks like on the first couple of frames when he jumps there's going to be this kind of big aerial impact as if he just jumped on the air and caused like a little force around out around him and then that's just going to disappear next we're just going to remove this base one right here and save all of these together this will be the jump back and these two frames will be the double jump we're just going to save them in the same folder for for simplicity's sake let's see we're going to find double jump and we're going to replace all four of these animations here. With these two frames. 
Oops. Then we're going to find the double jump action. See, it says this here, and we're going to slow this down to two frames a second, just so the, the, the player can see that little impact frame. And now, I'm hoping this ends up looking good. So we jump. And then we double jump. Oh shit, it's actually set on a, a loop. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we leave. And let's see here, we we, we, we have the double jump node here. Uh, and we're gonna uncheck loop animation. I didn't realize that was set to loop, but I guess that makes sense. It's now Horolu. We're gonna jump. And then we're going to double jump. And you see it looks like we just like jumped up on the air, kind of like Super Smash Bros style, how they have that, that kind of double jump thing, you know. Up next is our jump backwards, which is also easy to implement. Find jump back and replace all four of these frames with the one frame that we made. And now we play to test. And now we can just jump backwards. Look at that. Easy as cake. All right, next we need to take care of that aforementioned grab animation. Now the grab animation, what I, uh, I noticed was particularly interesting um, because there are only two separate frames. Uh, there are only two different frame pictures, but they have different amounts of each frame in order to get around kind of the, the annoyingness of not being able to just pick one frame to do over and over for a, for a specified amount. You have to do it kind of manually. So, um, let's find the grab. So there are two animations to grab. Let, let's pull up the grab animation here. Right? And if we, if we play the animation, you can see that there's two different animations to it. There's the one where he's charging up the grab and the one where he pushes it in. Now, uh, there are 13 total frames to this. This says 12, but it actually starts counting from zero. So there are one, two, three, four, uh, four frames worth of this charge up here and then uh, nine frames worth of this here. Now, in order to make sure that the hitbox still kind of matches, what I'm going to do is make sure... Um, I, I don't think it's necessary to, to have these ones, per se, uh, these extra frames. But what I'm definitely going to do is make sure that I have... Uh, I, I make my two frames, and I make sure that the first one has four, has four instances in the animation here. So now let's go ahead and make our grab animation. Yeah, that would actually cause his arm to go lower rather than higher. Uh, his arm's going to go higher on the second frame for sure, though. Uh, but this, the axe would definitely tip upwards from this direction as this side gets weighed down more without the, the weight of that. And add in our axe edge. Add in a new frame. Fill this in. And a, a little shortcut that I found. Oh, god damn it. That's not the shortcut. A little shortcut I found. Uh, but you pick the layer with what uh, with, with the beard here, and you just use the move tool, and you can move the whole thing right over. And now all we have to do is delete this one uh, thing right here. And then refill it back in with the white square. And bada ping, bada boom, we've shifted the head over just a teensy bit. Not too much. There we go. That's a grab, right? Yeah, that's a grab. And now from rotating his body, this arm would move back up. In. And I'm actually just going to move this. Oh, wait, wrong one. <laughs> I'm actually just going to move the axe. I'm, I'm too lazy <laughs> to bother reanimating that again. We will be adjusting it, though, for sure. 
Yeah, we can erase, uncover anything that's not white, and then take back our gray color here. And boom, there we go. Axe moved. Next, just delete this base frame. And now we have our two frames of animation. All right, next we're going to uh, pick all of these and just trash them all. We need to make sure we have four frames of that first one, and that's all that matters. So one, we're going to, uh, where is it? Copy, and then paste, paste, paste. Then move this one over here, and that is one, two, three, four frames of the charge up and one of the grab. Uh, then I just need to go over to the grab action in the node and make sure that it's not looping or anything crazy like that. Yeah, no, it's not looping. And we go in. Damn straight, look at that. And we still have ninjas throw animations. We gotta get rid of that as our next target. Let's take a look at how the throw animation functions. Forward throw. This animation is just played backwards if you go if you if you throw the other direction. So yeah, this one has that first frame played again. It's it's another two-frame animation. Uh but this time the first frame is played nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the last one is uh, the actual throw. So we're just going to make two more frames. I actually almost kind of just want to use these same two frames again because they're kind of perfectly shaped for a throw, right? Like he just brings one arm backwards and then throws him again. Let's let's see how that looks. Does I wonder if that would look pro if if that would look okay. No, let's. At the very least, we need to adjust one frame. We need to adjust the second frame here. Uh, if we're going to have this be the throw animation. Because we do want to take shortcuts wherever we can. It's not worth it to just run your life ragged trying to trying to do something insanely detailed when it's just our first mod, right? And I do want it to be a high quality mod, but it's not necessary to go that hard. So. We're going to take shortcuts where we can. Because I feel like teaching people shortcuts is also important. We're going to have the character kind of lean forwards. With this being his head. Uh, we're going to add a couple smears. So to give a, a sense of motion, if you will. We might remove the smears if they turn out to be not so good. I'll definitely save this as an ASC instead of, instead of just as a PNG. I'll be saving it as both. And then erase the hand slot. Right there. Alright, now we're going to save this as an ASC, right? We'll make a new file here. Throw. So that'll keep all our layers, right? And then we're going to save as again as a PNG. Name it differently just so we don't confuse the two. All right, so we need 10 frames total. Nine frames of this, one frame of this. Copy and paste, 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 paste. There, that's 10 frames total because we start at zero. So we drag throw animation two down here and let's see how it plays. Okay, so what we want to do is uh, we, we, let, we want the smear frame to stay there. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, let's check how long the actual animation lasts for the throw. So we're going to filter nodes throw forward throw uh, the animation length is 15 frames that's how long we have to play with we have 10 frames listed so far 
Alright, so uh, what we're going to do is pull up our lib sprite again. Because I didn't really like the way that ended up. And we're going to add another frame. And in this one, all that's going to change, we're going to go to frame 2 where our white is. And we're just going to uh, take the eraser tool and get rid of all that blur. Because the blur only needs to last for one or two frames. Alright, add frame, and take frame 3, and boom, there we go. This should work just fine now, if I'm not mistaken. Grab. Forward throw. Look at that, that's perfect. And there we go, that is our back throw anime and forward throw completely done. Look at that. Easy as cake. We're making good progress here. Because even though you have a forward throw and a back throw, uh, like, no, they both use the same forward throw animation. I think we're pretty much out of simple animations that we have to do now. Let's run through it here really quick. We made a burst animation, a dash backward, a dash forward. We made a double jump animation for our character. As well as a forward throw, a get up animation, a grab animation, a grabbed animation. That one was really easy. I just added, I just took the one for Ninja that already existed and added a crown and axe to it. Uh, hurt Aerial, Hurt Grounded High, Hurt Grounded Low, Hurt Grounded Medium, Instant Cancel, Jump, Jump Back, Knockdown for when you're on the floor, Landing, and um, there's not really much left. Parry High, Parry Low, uh, Weight is like the simple most important one for sure, and Wall Slam. Those are all the animations that we have created so far, and uh, through this we now have a fully functional Horalu character who is ready to have attacks and mechanics added to him now. Like, we have completed our base character, at the very least. He is actually functional in the game with no quirky animations. Oh, uh, wait, no, except we have to do the dodge. That is the only thing we have left to do, and I actually wanted to save this for the video. Uh, so basically... Uh, the dodge animation is something that I've been kind of stumped on how to do and I think I figured out how to do it. Uh, there is a character in Fire Emblem 7, like the old GBA Fire Emblem games called Hector, who has an attack animation that looks like this. Now first of all that jump could actually be used for a pretty cool sounding attack, uh, but my other thought process was uh, this little bit right here, that could be our dodge animation. And uh, that is what I'm going to work on uh, in between now and our next episode. Uh, so next time, next time that we have a video, I will have completed our dodge animation. I will show it off to you, as well as uh, start making a simple attack uh, and guide us through making simple attacks uh, for our character. So yeah, next episode we're actually going to start adding, you know, Horaloo's mechanics into into the into the game, which I am super excited for. But We've completed basically everything uh, we set out to do with the exception of the dodge animation, which I'm really excited to do. This is where I'm going to stop it for here. Uh, this is where I'm going to stop for today, gentles and lady men. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my mod progression. Uh, Horlu is actually, you know, a 90% a usable character. And by the time this ne the next video comes around and I have the wool animation complete, he will actually be a fully functional and usable character that has zero attacks, which uh, is cool. It's a, it's a good it's a good bit of progression. 
and I'm really excited for it. So thank you for watching. Have a great day and goodbye. Still my